Okay, so once you get the side panel off, that reveals the upper shock mount. Uh, as you can see here, I've already tried to uh, loosen that. Um, there's a little nub up here that you can put a special tool on or some vice grips or something, and I've had very little luck ever doing that in this climate. Um, these nuts tend to get rusted to the shaft here, but there is an upper lock nut. So this was just above here. I spun that off pretty easily. Um, so not all shocks have the lock nut. Uh, most of these factory shocks do. So you take the lock nut off first, get that off, and then the next order of business is to get this guy off. Um, typically on the factory part, it's a 15 millimeter. But what I'm gonna end up doing here is I'm gonna take the a cutoff wheel and cut, cut around here so that we can get this nut off. So I'll get the uh, vehicle set up for that and get the camera rolling once I start doing that. go. Nuts off. All right. So that's how we uh, deal with that. Just take the cutoff wheel and get the nut off. In some cases you can even do it without bungling up the threads. Not that it even really matters since we are replacing the shock. Okay, so now that we've got the upper shock mount unbolted from the body, um, we can go ahead and go underneath the vehicle. Um, I've got it supported with a jack and a jack stand for safety. Um, do not ever crawl under a vehicle without at least a secondary safety, if not a triple safety. You don't want a vehicle dropping on you. So what we're looking at here is the bottom of the bottom of the shock absorber. Um, this nut here is what we're going to have to remove. Um, 24 millimeter on the nut. And the other side, if you still have the factory bolt, um, is a, um, you can see here that it's a flag bolt of sorts. And from the factory, this uh, little ear here just bumps up against the, the rest of the suspension knuckle here and prevents the head of the bolt from turning. Uh, if you live in the rust belt or are in an otherwise uh, salty environment like I am here in coastal Alaska, th these um, flag bolts will not uh, hold up. So what I tend to do is I spray, uh, I spray the nut down with uh, air coil or something similar, and I will support the head of the bolt. Um, as you can see here, there's a cutout, so you can't put like a box end in, but you can get a good, um, 21 millimeter uh, open end here and just use this to back it up so that you're not putting stress on that flag bolt All right, so that's essentially what I'm gonna do here I got some cardboard down because I'm gonna spray things down with some air coil All right. <laughs> Kind of hard to do things off camera So I'm gonna let that soak for a little bit and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just resort to impact tools because I have them but you can certainly do this with hand tools if that's all you've got and I'll give this a soak for a few minutes and grab some PPE safety glasses and hearing protection all right it's been a few minutes so I'm gonna try to get that nut off the get the nut off the bolt here Hopefully you got that on camera. We got the, uh, the nut off. 
the washer is going to come off and the bolt will come off. So um, I mentioned using a good wrench. You'll want to use a snap-on, um, something that has the teeth in the open end here. Um, this one's a Carlisle, just uh, something, this Carlisle you can get at Napa fairly inexpensively. You know, Wright makes a uh, an open end like this, it's called the Wright Grip, Proto, I think they call it uh, Proto Grip or something. There's a bunch of different manufacturers that make a, a wrench like this, but um, these tend to hold on quite well. So I highly recommend it for getting that bolt out. So anyway, we will now move the, uh, remove the bolt and the shock and it should just drop out. And just like that, shocks out. So we've got the new shock here. Uh, the one that I'm using in this case is a, is a Monroe um, OE Spectrum shock. It's an okay quality shock. Uh, this is an older vehicle and we don't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. So it's a, it's a good quality shock that'll probably outlast this vehicle. So went ahead and removed the plastic bits that keep the shock in the compressed position. Now we have the shock out. And to prep this, we need to put a bushing washer onto the shock like so. And one of the rubber bushings, you'll notice that there's two um, sides to the bushing. We want the fatter end facing the shock. This smaller um, diameter here actually mounts up into the body. So we'll put that there like that. And then we'll push this through the, the body um, into the upper mounting hole. And we'll thread the other bushing and washer and nut in place. Okay, so here is a quick tip. I just went ahead and ran the lower shock bolt through the shock, the new shock. And as you can see here with the suspension at full droop, the shock doesn't quite make it up into the hole here. So what I've done is I've gotten a spare floor jack, just put it underneath the lower control arm. We're not gonna put a whole lot of force here. We're just gonna lift up until the rubber bushing goes through its opening right there. And we'll go ahead and try to center that as best as we can while operating the jack. All right, that's about all the more we need to go. So from here, we're gonna go inside the vehicle. Uh, make sure that the bushing has uh, gone through the hole and has centered itself, which it has. We got another bushing up top here. Again, the smaller diameter part of this bushing goes towards the body. The washer, um, the concave side goes towards the bushing and the nut. So most of these aftermarket shocks do not have, um, they do not have a secondary lock nut. So, and it looks like this one kind of changed sizes on me. So I think that's a 14. So I'll go ahead and grab a 14 and I'll show you how you tighten this. Okay, so it looks like Monroe uh, switched to American fasteners here. So we uh, had to grab a 916 wrench. So we'll thread this on by hand until it gets started. All right, in this case, I'm using a gear wrench, but we'll just tighten it here. And generally, if you have the uh, suspension uh, pushed up by the floor jack, like I showed you earlier, um, you won't normally have the center shafts in here. So basically, you tighten until the bushing is more or less flush with the outer circumference of this washer. Now, if you have problems where the inner shaft here or the stud here is um, turning, you can have an assistant hold the shock body or um, you can get pliers or something on the tip here, but I prefer to hold the body. 
Okay, so as you can see, the bushing has squished out so that it's flush with the washer. I'm gonna go back outside and look. And if you look at the one on this side, it's done the same. So you know it's in there um, securely and correctly. And uh, you don't wanna over tighten these. If you squish them down too far, then that bushing will degrade faster. Um, anyway, what I was saying is if that stud turns, you can, with these Monroe shocks with the metal um, dust shield here, you can hold on to this and have an assistant hold on to it while you tighten the upper nut. So now we just have the lower bolt to put on. So we'll just put the washer on and the nut. And much the same way as we took it off, just backwards, we'll go ahead and tighten this down. Uh, I'm gonna use an impact gun just because it's easier. And I will um, post the torque specs um, in the comment section or in the video description. Um, when tightening any sort of suspension component that has a rubber bushing in it like this one, um, you want to have the suspension um, at ride height. You don't want to have this um, extended down because that will lead to premature bushing wear here. So what I did is I put the floor jack underneath it and lifted the suspension until the, uh, the control arms were at the same angle they're at when the vehicle's sitting on the ground. You can also put the wheel back on and let the vehicle sit on the ground. Um, that works also. But anyway, um, that's just another tech trick here make to ensure that you get um, long life out of this bushing. If you tighten it with suspension drooping all the way, then once you put the vehicle weight back on, it causes a twist in that bushing. And we want that bushing to be in a neutral position when the vehicle's sitting on its wheels and that'll get you the longest life of these rubber bushings so i'm going to go ahead and tighten this up and after that we will proceed to uh reinstalling the interior panels all right sorry i didn't get footage of that but anyway i've got the uh, lower shock bolt torque to spec um, spec is listed in the video description so if you want to know what that is please look there uh, I'm going to put the wheel back on. I'll take this jack off, you know, obviously. Put the wheel back on, then get it off of the other jack and jack stand. And we'll tighten the lug nuts to the torque specified again in the video description. Okay, so I've got the interior panel um, about ready to go back into the vehicle here. So what we're gonna do is just, we're gonna check on the clips here that, um, secure it to the body work and make sure all these metal ones are in place which it looks like they are um looks like we have one missing here from the factory but it's just what it is um got one there got one there and i believe that's all there is um these plastic ones right here um go into this hole right here they tend to break so replacement for it is actually um, available at Napa and I imagine some of your other auto parts houses but um, it kind of crosses over to a Chrysler part so these are the clips you'll need we'll go ahead and grab one um, we'll snap it back into place here sorry about the traffic uh, it's kind of hot in the shop today so I got the doors open so got all the clips in place uh, minus the one that the factory forgot to put in. Um, it is not in the body as I'm looking here. So we're just going to ignore that because uh, I don't have a replacement part for those. I don't believe you can find those at Napa. At least I haven't been able to. So from here, basically backwards of how we got it out, we just sort of set it back in here um, in place. We'll have to pull the weather stripping, of course, just to get that out of the way. Um, this aperture panel here pops up again, just like it did when we removed it. You can see the clips here. So that just pops out of the way. We'll have to just set this in place and jiggle the carpet around. Um, usually just pull it up like that and just slowly get it into place. 
Um, I'll see if I can put the camera down in a location where you can see what I end up doing. Um, you just want to make sure everything lines up, you know, particularly the seat latch. Um, you can pull the plastic out like that to make it a little easier to line up with the, uh, the seat catch here. And um, the other spot of interest is the um, aperture panel here that's still popped out from before. It has its own little Christmas tree type fastener. It uh, goes into that hole here. So the quarter panel um, sits down first and then the aperture panel sits on top of that and that plastic fastener goes right through and into that hole. Um, you'll also want to pull the weather stripping off just enough so that you can get the, the panel in and uh, try not to get the seatbelt caught in it like I just did. So now that I'm thinking about it, I'll, I'll just pull this off. <clears throat> and get the seat belt around. So the seat belt goes on top of this panel, not behind it. Sorry for my shoddy camera work. I don't have my cameraman here again. He's been working night shift, so at his day job. <laughs> so, sorry about that. But anyway, I will start getting things lined up a little better here. And again, this is just one of those things you want to take your time. Um, you want to get the clips to line up with their holes, front and rear. Um, you know, there's some more here. You want to just get everything lined up. You don't want to force it. And in fact, it's looking like it's going pretty smoothly for me here. So I guess I'll just continue rolling the camera for as long as I have everything lining up. So there's a plastic one that we just replaced. Just slowly start pushing clips in until we have everything lined up and snapped in place. So there's one here that I know we need to deal with. Probably one up here. All right. Weather stripping's coming down, but we'll just put that back in place once everything is snapped in. All right, we're looking good up here. Go ahead and give it a tap here and there if you think the panel's not in correctly. You don't ever want to force it. But now that we got the seat um, latch here in place, we'll go ahead and snap this guy back in. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and put the weather stripping back on. It's always difficult doing this with one hand. So, move the seat up now that we got the rear half of this panel on. And again, we want this hole to line up with the hole in the body, which then this peg goes through. Once everything is lined up, it should just press down fairly nicely, like so. Um, we'll get the um, weather stripping on here. Um, I believe this part of the weather stripping goes underneath the aperture panel here. So I'll go ahead and lift that and put it into place and just get everything lined up and um, sorted out here before I snap everything together tightly. So. Sometimes some weather strip glue will help, but in this case it seems to be going on fairly well. Um, want to get it under the panels as necessary so that the rubber sits nice and flush and I can't do that with one hand so I'll have to shut you guys down and come back when I'm done okay I've got the weather strip back in place the uh, cap snapped on everything's pushed down and clipped into place there we go I feel good about that now we just need to do the same with this rear panel and again, I won't bore you with the details because uh, 
I'm just a one man show today and it's kind of difficult to do with one hand. So I will start the camera rolling again once I get this weather strip in place and this aperture panel snapped in. Okay, I've got the weather strip back in place, the panel snapped in uh, correctly and everything is lining up the way it should. In fact, I think it's better than it was when I started. Um, we just need to put the access cover for the jack back on. So that's good to go. Um, so that's how you do it on the right side. Basically, it's the same process for the left side. Um, pretty much the exact same process, except you don't have the jack compartment, but everything else is the same, just mirror image. So anyway, that is how you do a shock job, rear shock job on a 2005 Ford Escape. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. And if you like it, please hit the like button. Uh, if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. And I will definitely try to get more videos like this uploaded in the near future. Thanks and have a great day.